This is Echo 3, and let's continue our modded career mode discussion. Last time, we were able to get quite a bit done, including having Jebediah do a flyby of the Mun and returning safely. I mean, we didn't even break any parts or anything. It was incredible. Now, I'd like to get started by expanding our transportation services. We have multiple contracts to fly Kerbals around. This first one is actually to work with the Kerbin Navy. We need to take four guys to the Kola Island Naval Air Station which should open up some future contracts to work with the Kerbin Navy. We have two other passenger contracts to haul Kerbals to the island airfield and back. We can do all of these missions in the same flight, although that's going to be 23 passengers, and this last contract requires two certified pilots. So that's 25 Kerbals in all, but the two certified pilots will be good. Uh, Jeb and Val will get a chance to fly together. Val hasn't flown much, so I'm hoping maybe get her a little bit of experience, get her trained up as well, because we're going to need multiple pilots for some of these future missions. This is going to be somewhat of a fairly typical build for a plane. We're going to need, uh, obviously, a bigger plane to haul this many passengers, so we're going to take advantage of our upgraded space uh, hangar here that we can just have a lot of parts, need a big wing, for all this weight. Nothing nothing too unusual. If you've seen me build planes, this is going to look very similar. But we have auto struts, and I don't have to auto strut every part. I'm just trying to auto strut a few of the more vulnerable parts. I tried launching this plane earlier without auto struts, and it just wobbled too much. A, a few auto struts, well placed, just kept the plane a little bit more rigid in, in flight. What I'm doing right now is I'm increasing the angle of attack on the wing, the main wing there, so that the plane will fly straight, but the wing will be angled a little bit as it encounters the airflow, so it'll produce more lift. It also means the body of the aircraft will have less drag. Right now I'm setting up the control surfaces. This is, again, very similar to how I do a plane. The outside of the main wing control surface is for roll. The back wings uh, the, are our elevators, and we have a rudder, which controls yaw. Now we're setting up the landing gear. Trying to be very careful with this. The center of mass is a little bit towards the front of the aircraft, which means while the main rear gear are behind the center of mass, we have a lot of the aircraft still behind that. So I added an extra wheel there to just help in case we have a tail strike, that that'll take the brunt as opposed to the back and destroy the aircraft. And the reason I know that is because I did a little testing with this and like I, I need some help there. Let's throw on our name so everyone knows whose airline this is. Make sure we've got everyone. Load the passengers. Our first destination will fly to the island airfield and then we'll load and drop off people as needed there and then we'll go to the Kola Island Air Station and do what we need to do there, just really land and get certified and take off and we'll go back to the Kerbal Space Center and we'll complete all of these contracts in just this one flight. Several people have been asking for my mod list and at the end of this video I have a full list I go over all of the mods that I have installed so if you wait till the end of the video at the very end I go over all of it so if you want to see that that's fine we are here and we just have to kind of get in the right spot and wait and there's in the contract list there on the side there's a timer and we just wait for that to count down and that's it this plane does take a lot of room to take off so I went to the one end of the runway and used all the runway here to take off. Now the Kola Island Air Station is just south a little bit with this island just kind of right over here. Kind of see it there. That runway is just sticking off the side of that island. We are on approach. Good. I like this uh, airfield here. It's really long runway, so we don't have any problems with this. I look forward to doing future missions here. This is one of those uh, Kerbal Constructs uh, stations and with the giving aircraft a 
purpose and the uh, Kerbal Constructs and the um, with the mods there together, I can have access to flying to more airfields and missions to do that, which is kind of fun. So I, I've been I've been enjoying that part of this. That you know we're not just flying to the three airfields; we can fly quite a few, and there's a lot of options there. So I look forward to just flying around Kerbin and checking out all these different air bases and really expanding the airline service part of this. And I hope to try building maybe some massive airlines where we're hauling, I don't know how many, a hundred Kerbals or something to different places. It should be quite interesting and in challenges of trying to haul that many Kerbals. This mission, obviously not one of our harder missions. It went well. Hopefully, Valentia will be ready for her, her next mission because I want to not just expand our passenger service on Kerbin, I want to expand our ability to haul Kerbals into space. As we go over to Mission Control, there is a contract to haul a tourist, we'll open up our space tourism, and we want to take this guy, Tito, on a four-hour orbit of Kerbin. So Jeb's already been to space a couple times, I think it's Val's turn. We don't need to really design a new rocket for this. This is the same plane that we took Jeb on a flyby of the MUN. All I did was I switched out the cockpit so it's a two-person cockpit instead of a one. So that's, that's the only change on this. I know it's an overbuilt rocket at this point. However, it's the only one I know that has a safe return to Kerbin. And I thought, you know, let's use a certified rocket that has a good track record to take our first tourist on, as opposed to, you know, some of maybe the sketchy designs, like our first orbital class rocket that, well, I mean, the capsule survived and Jeb survived. It just, it, I don't think it went over very well, maybe in the press releases or something. It, you know, we didn't lose anybody, but I want to have a really good mission. So I went with a safe, proven rocket and plane here. We get this guy into orbit. A lot easier with maneuver nodes, by the way. And now we just have to time warp four hours ahead. And that will complete what he wants. Now we need to get this guy back safely onto Kerbin. I have several tutorials on space planes and stuff. And you can check out my how to land a space plane back at the Kerbal Space Center runway from orbit, which is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm hoping Val is able to be as successful as Jebediah. He did really well with his flyby from the MUN. Val's coming a little bit more aggressive than I would like, but I like the ability that we can use with these rudders to use them as air brakes. Val, take it easy, take it easy. Oh, well, I guess any landing you can walk away from. Good job, Val. If you notice there on the side, of the contract list, it said that our one contract with the ScanSat had completed. Eventually what we'll be able to do with those is we'll transmit the data back and we'll get quite a bit of science from scanning the MUN and from Kerbin. So here is one to investigate some kind of structure and there are four of these. We investigated one obelisk there near the Space Center. This one's a little further away. It's to the west in the mountains. So we need to design an aircraft that can land in the mountains. We have some pretty good aircrafts already, but I need a fairly maneuverable aircraft with a, with a good thrust to weight ratio that can have a very low stall speed so we can land on, I don't know how much room we're gonna have to land. So I'm hoping that we can come up with an airplane here that is, is small enough and light enough. We don't need a lot of fuel. This is just west of the Space Center a little ways. You see I'm using a forward swept wing design. I really want to increase maneuverability, which is going to mean we're going to have our center of aerodynamic pressure fairly close to that center of mass. Obviously, I need to have the 
pressure indicator behind the center of mass to have positive stability. You know, I, I want to have some kind of stability, but we don't need super stable like a rocket or anything. I want to be able to be maneuverable as we try to choose some of these landing sites. Fairly typical plane design, elevators, ailerons, just set these up. I don't need the ailerons to have that full control authority. This will have, this will roll plenty easily without that. We're going to use these rudders as well. I'm going to go with two, kind of increase a little bit of our stability that way, but I will have them deploy in opposite directions when I use the brake action group and that will act as kind of an air brake as well so we can slow this aircraft down quickly so we can land on a short area. I don't know how much area in this region of the mountains we're going to have to work with so I need to design something that's fairly safe. We're going to throw on a few gear and I want these as wide as possible. When you're landing not on a runway you have to account for obviously the the bumpiness of the terrain so I want this rear gear set out pretty wide it's not a, a very wide plane to begin with so we're trying to make something like a, an equilateral triangle with the way we set up our gear and these are these are getting pretty good we have some other gear unlocked as well we got these small ones which I'm gonna put here on the front we just don't need all the weight of the bigger gear so we'll just slide that up front I do make liberal use of the offset key here trying to make sure the gear are somewhat level in this case the front gear can be down a little lower than the rear gear uh, it can help with some of these shorter takeoffs if the nose of the plane is naturally up a little bit the point of this mission is to gather as much science about this area as possible and I think we get like about 40 science from investigating this. Let's throw on more science experiments on here and see what all we can come up with. Since I want a pilot and a scientist, I'll throw on this Kerbal Engineer piece so we get the full engineer readout as well. It just can help with some of the details. I probably don't need it for this particular one, but I like to just have all of my details up top. I'm hoping that we get quite a bit of science out of this mission. Here we go. Let's have Val fly again and we'll put Bob in there as our scientist to check out this strange thing in the mountains near the Space Center. And there goes Val on another very aggressive flight. We're gonna just go over to the mountains and I'm, I have the location put on our, you can see there on the nav ball, I set it as our target. So we're gonna look around and see if we can find where, to, oh, I see it. It's we're going to turn around and I'm going to put my mouse cursor close to the target. There it is. It's up there. That's not a lot of room to work with. That's like on the side of a very steep... Oh, Val's going to make the landing anyway. Can she pull it off? She... Wow. Good job, Val. That was almost nothing to work with. No... Nothing too flat around here. And she pulled off a good landing. Let's gather all the science from this strange thing. Uh, I have... I don't think I've ever been to this location before. All right, Bob, what is this thing? Go check it out. Climb, 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 climb. It's kind of similar to the one near the Space Center. That monolith looks like it was dug up recently. Um, who is doing archaeological work on Kerbin? Is there a Kerbin Archaeological Society as opposed to a space program? That'll be interesting to find out. Val is on another aggressive takeoff, and she has gotten off that mountainside beautifully. Wow, she is turning out to be quite the pilot as well. Never mind that one upside-down landing. Although I guess nothing broke, so... We'll, we'll keep her on our program. It's nice having Jeb and Val, some good pilots we can count on. We got these air brakes, which you can see the, the rudders kind of flared there. All right, good job, Val. We have got ourselves quite a bit of science. This is Echo 3. Thanks for joining me for this modded career mode discussion. I will see you next time.
The mods I'm using for this playthrough are Airplane Plus, Atmospheric Autopilot, B9 Part Switch, Better Early Tree, Better Time Warp Continued, Camera Tools, Chatterer, Click Through Blocker, Community Resource Pack, Community Tech Tree, Contract Configurer, Contract Pack, Anomaly Surveyor, Contract Pack, Bases and Stations Reborn, Contract Pack, Clever Sats, Contract Pack, Exploration Plus, Contract Pack, Field Research, Contract Pack, Giving Aircraft a Purpose, Contract Pack, Tourism Plus, Cryo Tanks, Cryo Tanks Core, Cryogenic Engines, Cryogenic Engines Liquid Fuel Oxidizer, Cryogenic Engines Extra Surface Attachment, Custom Pre Launch Checks, Deployable Engines Plugin, Distant Object Enhancement Continued, DOE Continued Default Config, Draggable Navball, Dynamic Battery Storage, Engine Lighting, Environmental Visual Enhancement Redo, Fire Spitter Core, Fire Spitter Reef Source Config, Hide Empty Tech Tree Notes, Hull Cam VDS Continued, Kerbal Actuators, Kerbal Alarm Clock, Kerbal Atomics, Kerbal Atomics Liquid Fuel Only, Kerbal Engineer Redo, Kerbal Constructs, Kerbin Side Remastered, Kerbin Side Remastered Giving Aircraft a Purpose, Copernicus Bleeding Edge, Mark IV Space Plane Systems, Modular Flight Integrator, Modular Manager, Navball Docking Alignment Indicator, Near Future Aeronautics, Near Future Construction, Near Future Electrical, Near Future Electrical Core, Near Future Exploration, Near Future IVA Props, Near Future Launch Vehicles, Near Future Propulsion, Near Future Propulsion Xenon Hall Effect Thrusters, Near Future Solar, Near Future Solar Core, Near Future Solar Spacecraft, Neptune Camera, RCS Build Aid, Reentry Particle Effect Renewed, RVE 64 Kerbin Clouds for Spectra, ScanSat, Scatter, Scatter Default Config, Scatter Sun Flare, Smoke Screen Extended, Spectra, Stock Waterfall Effects, Texture Replacer, Toolbar, Toolbar Controller, Trajectories, Waterfall Core, Zero Mini AVC.